Unfortunately, the compression process imparts heat into the refrigerant being compressed. This heat is called the heat of compression and is directly related to the compression ratio. A decrease in suction pressure or an increase in discharge pressure will result in a higher theoretical discharge temperature. High discharge temperatures increase friction and cause lubricating oils to break down, which result in wear and tear on the compressor. As a result, refrigeration systems with very low evaporator temperatures cannot operate efficiently using a single stage of compression. Engineers address this by employing a two-stage system in which compression is divided between two different compressors that are in series with each other. The first stage compressor is called the booster compressor. Vapor from the evaporator is drawn into the booster compressor where it is compressed to an intermediate pressure between the evaporator and condensing pressure. Vapor exiting the booster compressor is piped to a vessel called an intercooler. The intercooler maintains a level of intermediate pressure liquid that the booster discharge gas percolates through. This desuperheats the booster discharge gas so that the vapor exiting the top of the intercooler, while at the same pressure, is a much lower temperature. That vapor is supplied to the inlet of the second stage compressor, which is typically called the high stage compressor. Removing the superheat from the vapor supplied to the high stage compressor results in a discharge temperature at the high stage compressor that will not break down lubricating oil or damage the compressor. So let's talk about two-stage systems. Due to uh, the discharge temperature that results when you try to run a freezer system in a single stage of compression using ammonia, we have to go to a two-stage system. All right, because um, discharge, high discharge temperatures are simply uh, unacceptable once they get over a certain level. Uh, and a two-stage system, a simple diagram is depicted here on the whiteboard. And there's a lot here that we're already familiar with because we've gone over it previously, but let's, let's walk through this. Okay, first we have what we call our high stage compressor. Okay, the high stage compressor um, receives vapor, compresses it and discharges to a condenser where the heat from the evaporators and the heat of compression gets rejected to atmosphere, just like in a standard vapor compression cycle. Uh, from, the con from the condenser, um, liquid drains out of the condenser and uh, travels through some sort of expansion device. I've depicted an expansion valve here, which lowers the temperature um, and the pressure of the refrigerant as it passes through the expansion device. And so we have now a lower pressure liquid that enters now our new component that's part of this two-stage system, and that is called an intercooler. So this low pressure, lower pressure liquid enters the intercooler, and I didn't show it here, but there would be some sort of solenoid valve that um, is interlocked with some sort of flow control uh, or, or level control so that we maintain a level inside that intercooler of this lower pressure liquid, all right? And now if we look off here, now we take, uh, in the process of going through the expansion device, we know that flash gas is formed. So that flash gas will, will tend to rise to the top of the intercooler where it can now be returned to our high stage compressor. So that vapor we've taken care of by not sending it to any evaporators or anything, it's going straight back to the compressor where it can be recompressed. The liquid now, the pure liquid on the other hand, we take off the bottom of the vessel and we take it to another stage of expansion. So a second expansion device where now this this lower pressure liquid goes to an even lower pressure. So from this point forward, I'm gonna call this our low pressure um, and the previous low pressure we'll refer to as the intermediate pressure. So that's one big difference between a two-stage system is we have a high pressure, uh, we have a low pressure, but we also have an intermediate pressure, which is where the intercooler operates. Okay, so low pressure liquid exits the intercooler, goes through an expansion valve, which lowers the pressure even further into our desired low temperature that we want in our evaporator so that we can supply um, uh, that low temperature uh, refrigerant into the evaporator where it absorbs heat from whatever's being cooled, causing the refrigerant to evaporate or boil. It exits the evaporator and that vapor gets supplied to a compressor. And this compressor is called a booster compressor. Sometimes it's referred to as a first stage compressor, but more commonly in industry, a booster compressor. The booster compressor 
functions very similar to a high stage compressor except that the discharge from the booster doesn't go to the condenser like we're used to. Instead, the discharge from the booster compressor is piped to the intercooler. Um, and I'm showing the pipe here going down to the bottom of the intercooler into that bath of intermediate pressure liquid. So by putting our, our booster discharge vapor into that liquid, I'm showing the bubbles kind of percolating up, it de-superheats the booster discharge gas. And this is what we're looking for. You need to lower the temperature, not the pressure, just the temperature of the booster discharge gas. We're getting rid of the superheat. This vessel has saturated liquid ammonia in it. So we're, by de-superheating that vapor, then that vapor along with the flash gas from the first expansion valve is supplied to the high stage compressor. And by doing, and then we've talked about the rest, by doing this, we drastically reduce um, the discharge temperature that's experienced right here, which is what we're aiming for. Furthermore, we operate more efficiently uh, because of some of the, the various things I've already discussed. For example, the flash gas not going through the evaporator in our first expansion valve. Um, so two-stage systems are pretty much mandatory when it comes to very low temperature applications.